Welcome back, and we are going to discuss planning your weekend this session. So now we've come to conditionals. So this lesson, our first lesson of two, we're going to discuss zero, first, and second conditionals. Now, I know these can be a little bit tricky, but I think we'll be okay. So as we mentioned, we're going to practice zero conditional if and when it rains, I have an umbrella. First conditional, if it rains, I'll stay home. And second conditional, if it rained, I would be happy because I love rain. So we'll start with our zero conditional. This is the most basic conditional. We can use if or when, a simple present clause, and another simple present clause. If I feel anxious, I usually meditate. Take note, these are both in simple present. And you can use either if or when for this zero conditional. You might wonder when to use if and when to use when for the zero conditional. For if, it's generally describing a fact. So summer is usually hot if it rains a lot in spring. So if the fact is there is a lot of rain in spring, summer is usually hot. So these are two facts. I always feel calm when I get a good sleep. This is describing a habit. So usually when we have a habit, when is the appropriate choice? So the habit would be getting a good sleep and you always feel calm. The most common use of zero conditionals describes habits and things that are always true. You can use these to talk about people around you or seasons or facts, things that are always true. You can also describe actions in different situations. So set actions when situations are the same. And we can also use with imperatives for advice. We'll take a look at what this means in the next few slides, but some common signal words that are used with zero conditionals are always, sometimes, and usually because they're describing some things that are always true. Let's look at some examples of our zero conditional. If you're tired, just take a nap. He always whistles when he does laundry. When you breathe deeply, you feel calm. If I don't work, I don't get paid. And here's a little more context for these examples. If you're tired, just take a nap. So for this example, this is advice, as well as the use of an imperative. So take a nap is a command. It's an imperative. If you're tired, just take a nap. Both of these are simple present. He always whistles when he does laundry. So this is a habit because he does laundry often. And when he does laundry, he whistles always. And there's that signal word. When you breathe deeply, you feel calm. And both of these are facts. So if the fact is you breathe deeply, the following fact is that you feel calm. If I don't work, I don't get paid. This is another fact. Moving on to our first conditional. We form this using if, a simple present clause, and a future simple. If I finish work early, I'll call you. Now with first conditionals, we use these when talking about likely predictions, consequences, plans, or expected results following the if situation. Now, we often use this to talk about possibilities and not just facts. So when we're not sure of the future, or if we're planning for different possibilities, we can use the first conditional. 
We can also use this with modals such as might or may to talk about possibilities when we're not sure. And now our first conditional examples. If I finish early, I'll call you. I won't get into law school if I don't finish this. If they don't have the fish, I'll have the pasta. If it rains, I might go to the library. And let's look at some meanings. If I finish early, I'll call you. So here is an example of a possible plan. I might not finish early, but if I do, I'll call you. I won't get into law school if I don't finish this. So this is an example of a consequence. Here, the if clause is after the consequence. So I won't get into law school if I don't finish this. And both are negative. If they don't have the fish, I'll have the pasta. So this is an alternative plan. So for a possible future, if they don't have the fish, I'll have the pasta. If they do have the fish, I will have the fish. If it rains, I might go to the library. So this is another possible plan. It might not rain, but if it does, I might go to the library. And finally, we arrive at the second conditional. Here we use if, a simple past clause, would, and usually a verb. If I were rich, I would buy an island. Now these second conditionals can be a little bit different. They're a little bit tricky, but we begin with hypotheticals. So these are things that are not true, but could be true in the future. We use second conditionals for wishful thinking, something that is unlikely to happen in the future if the present was different. The if sentence usually refers to a situation that is not true or is unlikely to be true. The would sentence refers to what might happen in that untrue situation. And some common signal words surrounding this are might and could, because these situations are untrue. This can be a bit confusing. So what I like to do is think of the truth first. So our conditional, the example sentence below, if I were rich, I would buy an island. So this is our hypothetical sentence. This is not true. The truth is that I'm not rich and I won't buy an island. So when you're forming conditional sentences, think of the truth first and then make your conditional sentence. If I were rich, I would buy an island. So let's practice some examples of the second conditional. If I had more time, I would help you. If you learned how to cook, you could make me dinner. If I spoke French, that would be so cool. And here are some meanings behind these conditionals. If I had more time, I would help you. So this is the conditional. The facts are that I don't have time and I can't help you. I want to help you. I don't have time. But if I had more time, I would help you. If you learned how to cook, you could make me dinner. So this conditional, the facts are that you probably won't learn how to cook. So you can't make me dinner. But in an untrue situation where you learned how to cook, you could make me dinner. If you learned how to cook, you could make me dinner. If I spoke French, that would be so cool. So this is an example of a hypothetical or wishful thinking. So I don't speak French. That is the fact. But if I spoke French, that would be so cool. Let's practice. Now here we have five practice sentences and we are going to practice using zero, first, and second conditional. Take a look at the sentences around the blanks to give you a clue at the appropriate tense. So in brackets, we have order food, 
pick you up, feel stressed, buy three houses, and taller. So let's choose the correct conditional based on the sentences around it. Take a second, pause the video, and pick the correct conditional. Okay, let's check your answers. If the restaurant is still open, I will order food. Here is an example of a first conditional talking about possible futures. I don't know if the restaurant is open, but if the restaurant is open, I will order food. I'll pick you up if you need a ride. So I don't know if you need a ride, but I will pick you up. You can also reverse this. If you need a ride, I'll pick you up. I always breathe deeply when I feel stressed. In this case, our signal word is always. So this is a habit. So this is our zero conditional. I always breathe deeply when I feel stressed. If I were a billionaire, I would buy three houses. So remember, here is our hypothetical situation. I'm not a billionaire, but if I were, I would buy three houses. So this is a hypothetical, wishful thinking. If I were taller, I would play professional basketball. So in this case, I'm not tall, but if I were taller, I would play professional basketball. This is another second conditional, or hypothetical, or wishful thinking. Our sample conversation for this lesson will be planning your weekend. So hopefully this is something you can use quite often. So in the blanks, we're going to use zero, first, or second conditional. And the subject will be I in the first one, I in the second one, and we in the third. So try to change the verb you see in the brackets to fit in with a conditional that makes sense with the rest of the sentence. Take a few moments and fill in the blanks. Okay, let's look at your answers. So the second sentence, most weekends in summer, I go to the beach if the weather is nice, but I might have to work. So in this case, we are talking about most weekends in the summer, which suggests a habit. So here we are going to use our zero conditional. If the weather is nice, I go to the beach, and this is a habit in the summer. Well, if you aren't working, I'll come to the beach with you. So here our conditional is the first conditional. If you aren't working, you might be working, but if you aren't, I'll come to the beach with you. This is a possible future. Sounds good. Imagine, if we lived in a hot climate, we could do this all year. So in this case, we are using our hypotheticals or our wishful thinking. So the facts are we don't live in a hot climate, so we can't do this all year. But if we lived in a hot climate, we could do this all year. Okay, so let's read this through and see what it sounds like. What are you up to this weekend? I'm not sure yet. Most weekends in summer, I go to the beach if the weather is nice, but I might have to work. Well, if you aren't working, I'll come to the beach with you. Sounds good. Imagine, if we lived in a hot climate, we could do this all year. You are awesome. Conditionals are not easy and can be a little confusing, but hopefully you feel a bit more comfortable using zero, first, and second conditionals when talking about planning your weekend or planning for a possible or impossible future. Excellent job.